Every week you're getting a different combination of lettuces and greens. Well, the CSA model has basically saved the family farm as far as I can tell. In the past when we've done mostly wholesaling, you know, you'd plant acres of whatever vegetable, you know, call a wholesaler, try to sell to them. They might not take all you have ready that week. They might drop the price. With the CSA, that's eliminate all of that risk. And the, the members are actually taking that risk along with you. Um, and because we grow so many different varieties of vegetables, even if a few varieties don't work out, we're covered with all the others. We got lettuce this week, and the peppers are new for this week. Fresh organic tomatoes. You're receiving produce that is harvested either the day before or the day of. They're getting a pretty good price for the quality of what they're receiving. They get to come to the farm, they get to bring their children to the farm, see the food growing in the field, pick the food literally out of the field, taste it, to, you know, see the differences between what they're seeing here and what they're seeing in the grocery store. A lot of times sustainability is phrased in terms of what we have to give up or losing the pleasures that we have and in fact it might mean more pleasures. At this point we've probably made close to 400 flavors of ice cream and there's no reason why we would stop. Fresh basil, fresh mint, fresh cayenne, lavender, rose, cardamom. Every year we purchase a higher percentage of our ingredients directly from farms and for the last couple of years the majority of our entire ingredient expense has been paid directly to farmers. By sourcing local ingredients I've been able to meet local farmers, buy their products directly from them, be able to put a face with the food, eat seasonally so that you're able to really notice what happens when food comes into season and peaks and what it's like to enjoy different foods at the peak of their season. If you want to talk about sustainability, there are other ways of doing things. It's not that climate change represents this absolute disaster to the economy. It represents a chance to redesign the way we're living, rediscover new values. There are enormous opportunities. What lies at the end is a richer fuller, healthier life. Billy Alstott grew up on his family's apple orchard. I used to change the water up here when I was 10 years old. The sprinkler pipes moved them every day, twice a day. You can look out over the, the valley here and you see all these patchwork of orchards that have been eliminated in the last 10 years. A lot of families have lost their farms and are gone. When global competition caused the apple market to collapse, Billy pulled up his trees and planted vegetables, herbs, and flowers. This is an ancho, real good roasting variety. And then also the Anaheim here, very good roaster. This just shows you the quality of produce that you can raise organically. Look good, huh, Robert? Yeah. There has not been one spray put on either field of the tomatoes or the peppers this year, not one. And it's due to the plants being healthy enough to withstand disease. And uh, our production is phenomenal. This variety gets the spider mite really bad. And we do use uh, predators, you know, bringing ladybugs, lace wings. We come through like once a week and release them. Small farmers get a much better price by selling directly to restaurants and consumers. And they get something more. When I used to be in the apple business, you would take your fruit to the warehouse and they would sell it. And you would never even hear any compliments or criticisms about what you were doing. But now to go and meet 
maybe 500 people every weekend and you know and have them give you the feedback that, that you need to improve what what you're doing organic peach how's that look there's more to this than just trying to make money you know you need some other kind of satisfaction we have uh, summer savory a little bit of marjoram uh, wild oregano, lemon balm, lemon verbena, epizote. You know, over in Seattle especially, people just hate their jobs, you know? They just like, oh, they have these wonderful jobs, but they hate them, you know? And it's just sad to see that. It really is, just kind of, ah, oh, poor people. We planted the, the seeds in December, and then moved them in here, and. Uh, End of February. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We could get more production if we use greenhouse varieties, but we don't. We use outdoor varieties to get the flavor, and then we adapt to them. And it just takes the weight and transfers it to that wire. So it can just sit there in suspension, see, without any weight against its root system. Now these are heirlooms over here. These greenhouses are heated during the winter not by a wasteful hot air furnace, but with warm water pumped under the ground. Just half inch PVC pipe every 18 inches in the ground, 14 inches deep. So we can bring the tractor in here, we can rotivate, and never hit the, the lines. And you're down at the root zone. It's, it's more than just heating the building. It's getting the soil at a perfect temperature to where the microbes go to, go to work and, and the roots will actually feed there. If you heat from the top, then the roots come up to the top and feed. Our greenhouses are very labor intensive. I see nothing wrong with that. I mean, it gives people jobs. These two greenhouses, I'll grow as much as I did in that whole four acres or five acres out there. And, you know, I know I won't get frosted here. I know I won't get hail. I know I won't get rained out. Or, you know, you, you see a lot of success here, but there's a lot of problems too. There's an experiment with eggplant. Didn't work. They grow too big, they shaded themselves, the mites loved them, didn't even cover their costs. So you're always paying for your education, formal or otherwise. <laughs> Isn't that funny how they just come to you after a while? These are a four way cross. They've got one quarter wild boar in them, and, and that gives them a hardy immune system. And Since he doesn't sweat, the pig doesn't get rid of biological toxins like we do. He comes out, he eats the dirt, and he runs that carbon through the inside like a carbon filter, and it detoxifies them from the inside. And they're healthy, they're spry, they'll frolic. These are happy animals. These are the way pigs should be raised, on dirt. It's pretty good today. <laughs> record for the day. It's my uh, birthday and it's record. Good for you. We basically chose to become farmers. We were born, we are not born farmers. We, this is what we want to die doing. We want to take care of a good steward of the land. We want to be organic. We want to watch our daughter grow up. And we want to be together farming uh, healthy food for our neighbors. Baco started loading this van at 3.30 this morning, and uh, now she's home at 6, and we'll start unloading all the ice chests, for and tomorrow. we'll be about 8, 9 o'clock tonight, finishing up ready for tomorrow again to shove off at 5 o'clock, you know. So that's our weekends. We do eight farmer's markets. And then we do restaurants. Now, there are some local restaurants in the um, Seattle area that are very committed to supporting local farmers especially sustainable organic farmers, and they would work with you. When you buy from a small farmer, you buy all different parts of the pig or the cow. You don't just buy a loin steak because the farmer has to sell the other parts. It's a give and take relationship, yeah. So, you know, we are grass-fed beef, so that means you butcher during the sun months of the year where there's nutrients in the grass. So it comes February, 